I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Uh, costs are based on the three applications. The total annual maintenance fee is $38,831. The contract term is three years with subsequent one-year renewal options. There is a one-time licensing fee of $193,497. Um, why am I presenting it? Because it's paid for out of my departmental budget. Any questions, uh, we'd be, be uh, certainly glad to answer them, and, and Kathy certainly has a, a very deep base of knowledge since the uh, system was thoroughly evaluated by a single tax office. Just so we're clear, outdated is, is being kind. It's archaic. Uh, outdated is very. It's over 20 years old. Okay, and it, this is something that is, is required in order for your office to function it's efficiently. Effective. Okay. And it, it includes many upgrades, and it will in, improve our efficiency, our accuracy, and our speed. Okay. Okay. Well, that, will I, there be a, a need for less employees by doing something like this? At this point, we're, we'll have to re. At this point, we'll have to reevaluate once we get the software in and get everyone trained and work on actually work with it. How long will that take? Like, is, how long is the Our training goal for? Goal is to have it in for 2024 tax year. At this point of the season, we're not sure if that's going to work. If we'll have it for 24, if not 24, we'll definitely have it for 25. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone have any other questions? Entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Question, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Resolution 230171. Approving the OIFAS Professional Service Agreements, be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby approved the Department of Human Services Office of Youth and Family Service Professional Service Agreements for the fiscal year 23-24 with the following. Friendship House, Info Matrix, Northern Tier Research, and the Premier Speakers Bureau, Horatio Sanchez. Adopted a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County held on July 6, 2023. Mr. Chairman, here to speak upon that is the Director of Human Services, Mr. Bill Browning. Bill, uh, can you please answer um, Joan's question from before? And why don't you answer for all three of these resolutions? Sure. Are yep. there any new ones, or are they all just uh, re-ups? Um, they're all re-ups with ex uh, two exceptions, one being the Friendship House Fair Program. This is a, a program to treat families that are involved in addiction. We're bringing it from the West Coast. We'll be the first on the East Coast to, to deal with this program. Evidence-based, strongly indicative of success with uh, methamphetamine addiction and opioids. And then the other one is uh, the speaker contract with uh, Horacio Sanchez, who will uh, be presenting resiliency and things to build resiliency in youth. This is part of a, a countywide initiative that's also being uh, sponsored by uh, the, the medical school. This is uh, related to that, and so we're hoping uh, at some point we'll be able to announce an entire push uh, on building resiliency of youth. Okay. So we had worked with the Friendship House before, but th this is a new aspect or a new service? This is a very new program. It's a pretty intensive program. It, it not only does treatment, it does uh, drug and alcohol treatment, it does behavioral health treatment, teaches families life skills, because obviously if they've been um, suffering from a disease of addiction, some of the life skills, uh, like a, even maintaining households, maintaining uh, rent, um, learning how to, to you know, do, do various things that we take for granted, obviously some of them have faced incarceration or coming out, and we're trying to, to reunite the family so they they could uh, be successful. And this program has shown to be very su successful on the West Coast, and we believe that, that we could adopt it here. Great. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Okay, entertain a motion to approve. Motion. motion. Second. My question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution 230172. Thank you. It's approving the OIFAS provider contracts. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby approved the Department of Human Services Office of Youth and Family Service Provider Agreements for the fiscal year 23-24 with the following. Children's Center for Treatment and Education, DBA Beacon Light. Children's Home of Easton. Community Specialist Corporation, DBA The Academy. Drug and Alcohol Rehabilitation Services, Lo Lo Loftus and Vergari and Associates. McCary, Pennsylvania. PA Child, Summit School Incorporated, DBA Summit Academy, 
adopted the regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County held on July 6, 2023. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Browning. Uh, the, these provider contracts, uh, they're open-ended because we are required to have contracts with any potential uh, placements for kids, meaning kids that are, are removed. So these are, are residential placements, shelter placements, um, drug and alcohol placements, um, et cetera. And again, there are no new contracts in, in this. Thank you. We've used all these placements in the past and they've all been satisfactory. Yes. Any other questions? I entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution 230173. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is an approving OIFUS Detention Center Agreement. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby approved the Department of Human Services Office and Youth and Family Service Detention Center Agreements for the fiscal year 23-24 with Central County's Youth Center and Northampton County each at a rate of $395 per day. Adopted the regular meeting Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County held on July 6, 2023. Once again, Mr. Chairman, here is Director Browning. Uh, these uh, are, as uh, they indicate, just a uh, detention contracts uh, for youth that are required to be detained. Obviously, there's a shortage of beds throughout the state, um, but these are two, uh, two counties that we've used in, in the past and have had beds available for, for us. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Mr. Browning? I entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Any question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Bill. Thank Aye. you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Resolution 2301174. Ratifying an antenna license amendment. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby approved and ratify the second amendment to the rooftop antenna license agreement by and between Lackawanna County and the University of Scranton. Adopted a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County held on July 6, 2023. Here to speak upon that is our Chief Information Officer, Mr. Mike Brown. It's good to see you, Mike. Uh, same here. Good morning, Commissioners. Well, this agreement is an extending agreement for um, our backup internet services that we relay from the University of Scranton. Our ISP provider is stationed within the University of Scranton's infrastructure, so we just they allow us access to their roof to beam the internet back over to our county building. And this is a long-standing agreement we had since 2014. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Not a question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank okay. you. Resolution 230176. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is on... Resolution entering into an engagement letter. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby accept and enter into an engagement letter with Highland Associates for design and architectural services for the Public Defender's Office renovations located within the Lackawanna County Courthouse in an amount not to exceed $6,250. Adopted a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County held on July 6, 2023. Mr. Chairman, uh, we recently had toured the courthouse with the President Judge and Judge Brace and Commissioner Domic looking at the first floor right. and the second floor. Uh, obviously, the first floor is not being in, in by any use at this point because the processing center had moved out behind the courthouse. So the judges are looking to move some things around inside there and the public defender's office also. Okay, great. Are you sure it's 62.5 and not 67? I just want to make sure. Is it? Okay. I don't know why I had that number in my head. That's a question. I, Question me, she put the number down. She knows about You don't have any idea what, why you have anything in your head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. motion. Second. A second. Let for the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opportunity Aye. for the public to address the board. Excuse me, we're going to take a five minute recess. <laughs> At this point. Um, all right, opportunity for the public to address the board. Joan. Joan. Joan Hodawan at Scranton. Okay, let's talk about the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Now I know we can't talk about the investigation and I'm not attempting to do so, but having read the various stories in the paper, if what was described happening to those children is substantiated, then you have a scandal that makes the Luzerne County Kids for Cash look like penny ante stuff. So let's hope it's not. But uh, what is the status of the action plan? Is it 
finished? Is it ready to be released? Will it be released? What's the status? I think we're going to take all comments and the answer at the end. Okay. But John, one fine. thing you and I have in common is our subtlety. Okay. <laughs> um, I know that uh, there are staffing issues in the Emergency Operations Center. I know that on occasion uh, there are issues in the prison, but kudos to Warren, Warden Betty. Every month he describes his staffing situation, so there really aren't many surprises there. Other than um, the Office of Youth and, and Family Services and the EOC, do we have any other departments with a significant staffing shortage? Okay, that's a question. Also, um, since you know you have a major problem in the EOC, are you also going to direct an action plan for that element? I know that these things are not easy. I went on the website um, for this Office of uh, Children and Family Services, and I see that for job opportunities, you can only be hired from the appropriate Pennsylvania State Civil Service list. Um, um, how are you going to work around that caveat? Will that also affect the EOC or any other place? Um, you know, I mean, this is not a happy time. Mm. Eventually, everyone up the line is going to have to answer two questions. What did you know and when did you know it? Just like in Watergate. And the only other thing I would like to ask is, who is replacing Judge Ruggiero as county solicitor? Anybody? Raise your hand. We were going to answer them at the end. Okay. So, Joan, it was, it was, you wanted to talk about the action plan, staffing issues at 911. Um, not really the staffing issues at LCP. You said they were aware. You, yeah, but the question other was, any other departments? Issues? And then you want to know who's going to be taking over um, Frank for Frank Ruggiero, right? County, county uh, solicitor. Thank you. Okay. Thank John, you. what was the, you said the EOC. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Wait. Hi, right, Joe Cohut with the Scranton Times. I uh, just wanted to piggyback off of what Joan was um, asking. I wanted to know uh, if you can tell me uh, since last week if there have been any more employee resignations from Office of Youth and Family Services. Personal issue. And uh, well, uh, just if there, without going into the identities of the people that have res resigned, if there have been any more uh, staffing problems created. And um, if there has been uh, any concerns for you in regards to uh, Mr. Browning's leadership at this point. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Oh. Mr. Kelly. Chris Kelly, Times Tribune. What actions have you guys taken to, uh, you know, to, to ensure that the status quo that's described in the in the affidavits of the arrest, that none of that stuff is going on right now. Has anything been done? I know Bill Browning and his wife are still in charge of the department. Uh, what are you guys doing in your oversight role to ensure that uh, the kids that are in this program right now, because what you have, what it seems to me, is an untenable status quo. What are you guys doing to manage that or ensure the safety of the kids and the families that are being treated, that, that are working with OYFS now? I can stop there. Beautiful. Thank you. We'll answer in a couple seconds. All right, then. Thank you. Anyone else? Three for three? Eight. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right.
Thank you. Uh, commissioner's other business, Mr. Shermack. Well, uh, well, no, we have to answer on. the t t They're going Go ahead. to. Okay. We're getting there. I know we're going to, you guys have some comments too. Um, we'll comment on the. Uh, Your mic isn't on. Chris. It's on. Um, I know a lot of these are personal issues. There's an ongoing investigation. Um, and, you know, I made a, I made a statement in a, in a, and everybody, all the media outlets have the copy of my statement the other day at the press conference. Um, you know, but the main thing, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again, you know, as a commissioner, most important part of my job is to make sure that the citizens of Lackawanna County are safe, especially the children. Um, so that is ongoing. As far as the action plan, I know Debbie's going to comment on that as well. Um, and, and, and we are working on that. We're working tirelessly with Bill Browning back and forth looking at these things. So Debbie can comment on that a little bit more. Um, on a good note, I'd like to comment on this weekend. I hope everybody had a great 4th of July. We had a great event in Courthouse Square. Um, you know, I don't want that to go unnoticed. We have our, our, our arts and culture department, Mari McGuigan and Chris Calvi worked very hard. Um, we had a great, great weather, a lot of vendors. The Philharmonic was there. It was, it was a nice night. It was a perfect weather. So I hope people got to see that. So that was very nice. So that's all I have. Okay. Commissioner Dominic. Okay, I'm going to adjust Joan. Um, with regard to the action plan, I think it should be considered more of an amendment or a modification of policies and procedures. It is not to be... Um, considered uh, in addition, it's more of an enhancement. There, there were policies and procedures and protocols in place in the OYFS uh, department, uh, rigorous ones, and they have been subject to audits and the state has, uh, you know, regulation uh, powers over OYFS, um, OYFS. Uh, so, there were policies and procedures and protocols, and there are policies, procedures, and protocols in place. With regard to the plan of action, what we are doing is basically enhancing those policies and procedures for a few reasons. Number one, to address the staffing shortage. Uh, it is an issue. It is. We are not deflecting from any other issues. Staffing is a problem in OYFS. It is a huge burden um, for these people who sign up for this job in their, in their 20s or in their 30s or really at any age, but to deal with these catastrophic, sometimes, sometimes catastrophic cases, sad cases involving children. Um, it's a hard job. So we are working, and you will see in the weeks to come, how we are trying to address the staffing shortage um, because of the fact that now we have uh, people out on. Uh, Sorry, that was Chris Kelly's five minutes. <laughs> now that we have people out on paid admin leave, it creates more of a shortage. So we are we are addressing that. My understanding with regard to the staffing issues at LCP, they're working on it. Um, and I think Joan, you even indicated that Tim talks about that at the at the. You know, I, I think at the prison board, really what we need to be addressing there is the FMLA. Um, I'm surprised you haven't brought that up because it's a huge issue, but staffing is an ongoing issue there, but it's, they're functioning and they're functioning well from my understanding. And they, they are. Um, with regard to the staff, staffing issues at 911, it's my understanding that they, they're improving. Yeah, we are. We increased pay, which I think was necessary. I believe that Al's last estimate was we're almost we're at 70%, which is almost 15% more than what we were last year. Okay. And we did have to increase the pay. Uh, it, another stressful job um, for peanuts. So, you know, increasing the pay, I think, did make it a little more um, attractive for people to, to uh, apply and, and, and whatever they're doing up there is working because we are, it may be a slow progress, but it's progress. <laughs> Um, with regard to staffing issues in other departments, not to my knowledge, um, I don't believe there have been any other uh, resignations from the OYFS department. 
um, to my knowledge. Um, what else was there? Any actions being taken regarding this situation with OIFS to ensure the safety of kids? Um, and any doubt on Bill Browning's leadership? Okay, so again, the, the plan of action, which I believe is more, sh should be more of an amendment or modification of policies and procedures, it's an enhancement of procedures that were already in place to address the staffing issues. But it's also, you know, regardless of, of what occurred or what didn't occur, and that will obviously have to take place in the courts or in the legal system. Um, whenever something like what occurred occurs, especially involving children, um, criminal charges are very uh, uh, serious, uh, uh, regardless of what the charge is on you know, various levels of, of, of seriousness, but these are quite serious. It triggers, in, in our minds, for us to take a look and see, okay, what happened? And that is what we're doing. We are diving, we are doing a really deep dive into the policies and procedures of the OIFS office um, with regard to just the general function and what needs to be addressed uh, or like tighten the, night, the, nut, the nuts and bolts of, 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 the, of the office to address the staffing issue, but also to look and see, okay, is there anything that we should or could change to perhaps prevent any, you know, anything that they're alleging from happening in the future, regardless of if it rises to the level of, of criminal conduct or not? Because remember, things happen. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's criminal misconduct. Um, so we are looking at that. We are doing a deep dive specifically into the three cases. Um, and, and I mean that sincerely. We are really looking at a timeline of what occurred from a very specific factual basis um, from the caseworker's perspective, the supervisor's perspective, and on our way up. Um, with regard to the plan of action or the, the, uh, the amendment of policies and procedures, whatever it may be called, we will be releasing it. Um, but again, this isn't something that we just have to hurry up and do. It's something that we really need to look at. We want to make sure that the, the public is aware of what was in place before and what is being changed. Um, I have noticed throughout the last three and a half years of being a commissioner that, you know, there are sometimes policies floating around that you don't know exist because they're not bound and, and put into effect. And there's a lot of moving parts. We don't want that to be the case with regard to a very important department or any department, but we're talking about OIFS. So we want to make sure that we know what's in place, what we, what we need to do to, en to enhance those policies and procedures, whether or not we need to add any additional uh, policies and procedures or reporting requirements or whatnot. And once we have that done, and we are working on it, but it's, it's a work in progress. Um, once we have that done, it will be released. Can I give you, I know the next question is gonna be, can we give you a timeline? No. Do I expect it to be six months from now? No, but I can't say it's gonna be next week. Our legal department is currently looking at it uh, for no reason other than our legal department looks at everything before it goes out. It's good practice. Um, but we are also uh, looking at it as well. So there have been numerous drafts. Um, there have been many suggestions by all of uh, the commissioners, by uh, uh, Chief Jeffers, so it's a work in progress. We are taking it very seriously. Um, I would like to say that, you know, affidavits of probable cause, for those of you who don't practice or are familiar with criminal law, affidavits of probable cause serve one purpose. And the purpose is to uh, list facts to substantiate the uh, charges that are lodged against an individual, okay? They have to prove what's called a prima facie case which means all the elements of the crime. And they use the affidavit of probable cause to put in facts to support charging individuals with specific offenses. Uh, by the, the nature of what an affidavit of probable cause is, and Tony Lohman is here, or, uh, so he can, he's one of our solicitors, he can correct me if, 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 if you feel it needs to be corrected. By the nature of what an affidavit of probable cause is, it's one-sided. Um, you're not going to see a big picture, the big picture um, and all of the circumstances and all the facts when you read an affidavit of, of probable cause. 
Um, I, I've been practicing for, for 23 years. Um, it still shocks me when I say that, but I have been. And I've seen many affidavits of probable cause. I could tell you that they do commonly uh, have omissions in them. They do commonly have inaccuracies. They do commonly have um, inconsistencies. And they certainly do not contain facts which are favorable to the individual to whom or against whom they are they are lodging these charges. Um, again, it's the nature of, of what an affidavit of probable cause is and the function that it serves. Um, the media, no disrespect, um, you're reporting based upon solely what's contained within the affidavit of probable cause. If the Scranton Times was the judge, juror, and executioner, well, we would be off at the heads within 30 minutes of, of, of filing a criminal complaint. Luckily, that's not the case. Uh, so you have to take into consideration the fact that there are other facts and circumstances in, about these cases that the public is not yet aware. Are you and aware of it? We, we, are, we, we are becoming aware of it. I mean, this is, you know, we're talking about thousands thousands of uh, emails and documents and we we are we are we are deep we're diving rogue yeah all right no we're not conducting a rogue investigation don't put words into my mouth I didn't say rogue. oh oh we are doing an internal investigation that's what we need to do that is our duty um, it would be wrong if we didn't on many levels um, so my point being though is that while I understand that you're going to report it sells papers, you're going to report based upon what's in the affidavit of probable cause, uh, there is another side to this. Uh, you have to understand that. The crux of our legal system, uh, I know I'll probably get shot for saying this, but it is the truth, but I've been shot in the past for saying the truth. You're innocent until proven guilty. That is the bottom line. Um, so with regard to these cases, you just have to be patient and let the legal, uh, the legal investigation and the uh, legal process proceed. Um, You're confident that the, the, the I'm going to answer. Dealing with OAFS right now are I'm going to answer. While we wait for that process. Up until this point, we have had zero reason to question the ability of Bill Browning. He is always on the sixth floor. He is very involved in his, uh, with us and keeping us aware of, of, of you know, of, of, of the programs that he's offering, of, of any issues that he's running into, of the staffing issues. I mean, we are well informed from him on, on a consistent basis. I, I can't speak for my co-commissioners, but I'm gonna speak for myself, that I have, as it stands right here, absolute faith in Bill Browning. Now, having said that, we are still conducting our internal investigation. So when we do that, if we feel that there is something that rises to the level of, you know, questioning that or changing that opinion, we will, we will address it then. But again, this just happened um, and, and we need time to, to dive in. I know everybody's, you know, anxious to get the plan of action and things of that nature, but we want to do it right, and we, you know, to say that we don't care about children um, is offensive and not true. I mean, the, uh, the, we, the the staffing issue is something that we began to address long before this occurred. All right, I actually received a phone call from someone that uh, you know that you're going to farm out our jobs. You're, you're going to get private. Pe That's not the case. You know, we went to the union to deal with it so that we were able to bring this firm in to begin to do that. We didn't just, it didn't just occur. It's, it's, it's an ongoing problem. It's an ongoing problem with a lot of these positions that are difficult jobs for minimal amount of money. And, and it's something we've been working on. This isn't brand new as far as that goes. Um, excuse me, ma'am, uh, you want to say something? I did. Can you? Well, you're, you're late, but you want to go up to the microphone. Pardon me? Yeah, I'm, everybody has that problem.
Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Sharon Soltis Sperano, and I'm a Republican committee woman. I'm sorry, Sharon, can you spell your last name for me? S O L T I S S P A R A N O. A N, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm a Republican committee woman in La, from the Lapoom Township. And I just wanted to say I've been following this in the news. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm extremely appalled. I know I came in late, but I did catch your last comment right there. I agree, people are innocent until proven guilty. However, I think all of you, and including to your, your solicitor, almost judge, I'm not sure, is he here? No, he's, a here? he's a judge. He's a judge now. Hmm. By selection, walk in, no opposition. It does not mean that he's not, he's the most, he's a very qualified individual. So. That's your opinion. Again, this is from opinion. Let, me, yeah. let me digress. I'll deal with him at another time. Um, the issue here is you say everyone's innocent until proven guilty. I'm a firm believer in that. However, did you think of that when you, when you made your statements attacking the Scranton Police Department and the District Attorney's Office? I don't think so. You launched attacks against them no issue of innocent until proven guilty, saying that they were bad actors on a witch hunt, you know, acted without due courtesy. But yet you want, and you want Browning to get respect. And they want, you want them to have their due process, but you denied all due process to the Scranton Police Department and the DA's office. Instead, you immediately jumped to try and sidetrack this investigation that they filed the charges for, they uncovered, they bought, bought darkness and truth to light, and then you want to send it to the Attorney General's office. Need I remind you, the Attorney General's office did nothing two years ago in a similar situation with abuse. And I remember that case. What I didn't know is that they sidetracked it, buried it, and did nothing. But that was our governor now, Shapiro who was the Attorney General at that time. He was also the Attorney General when he absolutely covered up a murder case in Philadelphia for Ellen Greenberg. Now, who's lodging the defamatory comments now? I'm just making a comment of a person's character and where you want to send an investigation. In my opinion, and I'll own it, my opinion is you're sending it to Mr. Coverup himself, the master, Josh Shapiro and his crew from two years ago. All right, uh, uh, that's enough. It's, uh, every, everyone has an opinion. Uh, and I do have an opinion. Okay. I don't come here often, th but I'm here today. You should listen to what I have to say. You don't have to agree with me, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you can't stand with the children and look and be outraged, this is not just the police department of Scranton. It is not the district attorney. Did you forget the state of Pennsylvania came in and, and did their own investigation? And they put it in provisional category? There's four counties in Pennsylvania out of 68 that are in a provisional category. And you have Luzerne, Cash for Kids, and Lackawanna, Cash for Kids, part two. Now, you want to know where I get in that cash for kids? It's the caseworkers, Browning, and all of you taking your paychecks on the backs and the abuse of the children. And as far as Mr. Chermak goes, the lone Republican up there, I'm sick and tired of you saying, I'm only one. I'm only one. What can I do? You could stand up and speak the truth instead of running to cover up for Browning and his incompetence and putting more money in to have uh, motivational speakers come in and talk, up there. he's a teacher, your motivational speaker that you're paying for. What does he have to do? Does he have to motivate the caseworkers that are paid like 60,000 a year to do their job? Shouldn't that motivation come from their heart? But no, you just keep throwing cash to no good and not fixing your problem. Your problem is your incompetent director. Then somebody said, I read in the paper, about bringing the Department of Health in to do an investigation. Uh, excuse me, I believe Browning is a member of the Department of Health. I think you people better like realize the focus is on you. And thank goodness the Times is doing this article. I may not agree with them all the time, but I agree with them on this. Thank God that they're putting this out and, and holding you people accountable. 
I mean, how can you have a 13 year old? Thank you, ma'am. Your five minutes 13 is 13 year old is thank pregnant. You. And then that's not rape? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have to address a few things. Number one, it's it, it, it's 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 in it's disingenuous to get up and say that we are defaming people and then defame a whole slew of people. Um, we're not defaming the, the the district attorney or the Scranton Police Department. Uh, whether or not we believe that the case should be handled by the attorney general's office, uh, that is our opinion, uh, and it will be the opinion of our counsel. And our counsel will put forward a motion if we decide to do that. And in that motion, it will contain the reasons for um, uh, our desire to have the attorney general uh, step in. With regard to Bill Browning, again, it's not that we are demanding respect. What we are saying is that right now, everyone, it's a heated, look, at it's a, it's a heated situation. It's a sensitive situation. It involves kids. There's nothing more precious than that. I have a six-year-old, okay? I, I, I get it. I, you don't need to have kids to even be appalled by anything, any type of uh, allegations of abuse uh, against children. However, what I'm saying is that the affidavit of probable cause is a one-sided document intended solely to support the charges against the individuals who, who are charged. So my, my point is, is that we are in the process of, of looking into all three of those cases ex I can't possibly even explain to you how extensively we are fact driven. I mean, facts going back years um, to the beginning of when these cases started moving forward. And we are still trying to make heads or tails as to what occurred and what not occurred, whether, you know, there was wrongdoing or not wrongdoing. And again, whether or not it, it rose to the level of, of criminal misconduct, which is a whole other separate issue. So you have to, you had your moment, Chris, please. Chris. Stop. 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 That will all come out. We're not going to comment. I've made it, I think it's good practice and, and, and I've, to, to not comment on any matters that are involved in any type of litigation, whether it be civil litigation, criminal investigations, or criminal cases. I've consistently stood by that and have, have not commented on any, any type of, of, of cases in, in those situations over the course of the last three and a half years. I'm certainly not going to start now. I'm going to let our lawyers do the talking for us, um, but that doesn't mean that we aren't doing our own work. As an attorney, I am also, you know, I'm going to look at it from a different perspective than my co-commissioners uh, be, because of the fact that I have a legal background. But to say that we don't care about the kids and that, that we're not making them a priority, that is simply, simply not true. Um, I think we've addressed everything, haven't we? Oh, okay. so the solicitor, no, I have, and I want to talk to someone actually happy. Um, the solicitor, Donnie Fredrickson, who was our first assistant, who's been here for 150 years now. <laughs> no, about good 10, 11, 12, well, how many years? 14 years, maybe? Maybe. Maybe four, I don't know. He was here 10 years, I think, when I took office, so he's been here a while. He is going to step in. Um, it just doesn't make sense to hire or look to hire a new solicitor. We're at the tail end of this administration with new people coming in. He is more than qualified uh, to, to, to handle it. And we also have assistant solicitors such as Mr. Lohman right here. Um, and from a, on a good note uh, involving kids, we have the opening of our splash pad up at McDade Park. I know it seems frivolous in light of the, the, the seriousness but it is something that we've talked about and we spent tax dollars on. So it, the ribbon cutting is Saturday at 11 a.m. It was supposed to be tomorrow, but uh, the weather is supposed to be bad, although I don't have a lot of faith in that. Um, but it's Saturday at 11, um, and the splash pad is going to be open Monday through Sunday, every day from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So at least that is something positive to look forward to. Jerry. Okay, thank you. And the uh, pool at Big Dade Park is in progress. Uh, things are, we, we have gotten some things done. Um, this is an ongoing investigation. We're not going to comment it any further. Uh, at that note, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. On the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I've said all that I've said, so I. Uh, with all due respect, I, I don't think anyone needs to approach me because I have no further comment.